Hello YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to create an iPhone 6 wireframe in Adobe Illustrator. So to start with I'm going to select my rectangle tool, I've got my document already created and I'm just going to left click and drag to create this shape. Now we're going to remove the fill and we'll just keep the stroke there and I'm going to set the dimensions to 750 wide by 1334 high. So you should have something that looks like this and I can just increase the weight of that stroke a little bit just so you can see. So there we go, we've got the screen size for the iPhone 6. Now I'm going to select this four-sided shape that we've created, go up to edit, down to copy, and then up to edit again and paste in place. And then holding alt and shift and left clicking on one of the four corner points, I'm going to scale up this shape from the center. Actually saying that we don't want to hold shift because if I do that, you'll see it will scale up completely in proportion. Whereas if we let go of shift and just use the alt key, it will scale from the center, but we can then adjust the proportions a little bit. So we're going to use this to create the outside of the iPhone body. So there we go, something like this. And now what we can do is we can round off these corners. Now, if you're using a CC version of Illustrator, you've got these little circles inside of the corners. You can click those and drag to quickly and easily round off corners. If you're not using a CC version of Illustrator, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure your shape is selected. Go up to Effect, down to Stylize, and select Round Corners. Tick the preview box and just increase the radius. So there we go, we've got a radius of, let's say, 80. And then in the appearance palette on the right, you've got your round corners option and you can click it to edit at any time, or you can delete it altogether. So there we go, we've rounded those corners. What I'm going to do now is go up to object, expand appearance, because what I'm about to do next, we don't want anything showing in the appearance palette. So the rounded a corners effect, we want to finalize that. So that's why we went up to object and expand. Then we can go to object, path, and offset path. And then in this dialog box, select preview and set the offset path. I'm gonna set mine to about 15, just something like this. So it creates another path just around the edge of our original rounded rectangle. So this is going to double up as the body, the outside body for the iPhone 6. I'm just going to select everything and decrease the stroke weight a little bit. And now I'm going to select the ellipse tool and just left click and hold shift to create that circle. This is going to be for our home button. Now if you've got your smart guides on, it will snap nicely in the center. To check, just go up to view, down to smart guides and make sure you've got this little tick here. And again, we can select this circle and holding alt and shift, just scale that down towards the center. So there's our home button. And then we're just gonna left click on the circle and hold alt and drag that up. Holding down the Alt key, it will create a copy of this shape. So we'll do that. This is going to serve as the camera at the top. So we'll just bring that down in size. And I think on the iPhone 6, there's another little circle here. I'm not sure what that is entirely, but all these little elements at the top are cameras and microphones and what have you. So for this part here, I'm not sure if this is a microphone or a speaker, I get mixed up, but we select our rectangle tool, the rounded rectangle tool, just left click and drag to create something like this. So just a nice rounded rectangle. And we want to make sure that this is all central now. So everything except this circle here, 
if we just left click and drag over this and go up to our alignment option and click horizontal align center. Everything, as you can see there, will just snap into place. So we know that everything that needs to be central is central. And we can line up this circle and there you go. Once again, you get the pink smart guides just telling you that this circle here is horizontally aligned with this rounded rectangle. So we can just nudge this over a little bit and then possibly just left click and hold shift to multiple select different items and we'll just nudge those down from the top. Okay, I'm just gonna make this a little bit thinner again. You can make your wireframe lines as thick or as thin as you like. Now we've got the buttons on the side. So I'm just going to left click on this rectangle here and hold Alt to make a copy, select the Rotate tool and rotate 90 degrees, holding Shift to make sure it snaps in place. And then with the Direct Selection tool, I can just left click and drag over these right two anchor points. So just these two here on the right, hit Delete or Backspace and it will remove them entirely. And I can now drag this over to create these side buttons. And if I want to adjust the length of these, I just have to select the direct selection tool, left click and drag over the bottom or top two anchor points, and then use the up and down arrow keys just to move that in length. So we can position these here and just shimmy that up and down with the arrow keys. Remember I can hold down shift and alt and click and drag to create a copy of this shape and it will stay in line. I believe there's another button as well. So let's do that again, holding shift and alt to drag up. I'm just going to nudge this out with the arrow keys. Just quickly reduce the length because I believe this is a different button. And then I can nudge it back in place. And it's always good using the arrow keys because it means then when you nudge it out and you edit the shape, you can then nudge it back in in exactly the same way. And you know it's going to be in exactly the same position that you left it. We're just going to zoom in and close up this gap here, just so those lines are all touching. And one last thing, this is a very minor detail. The screen itself does have a slight rounded corner to it. So I'm just going to round that corner off ever so slightly. So we've created the wireframe for our iPhone 6 at the moment. This is all made up of lines, of strokes, which is really good because we have the flexibility to adjust the weight, apply any effects, whole manner of different things. You can, if you, if you scale this down in size, or you're planning on scaling it down in size, you'll see that it does remember all the stroke widths that you've put in. So if you are gonna adjust the size of this after you've finished it, I'd recommend going up to Object, Expand, make sure Fill and Stroke are selected and click OK. So when you scale this down now, although you can no longer edit the widths of the lines anymore, it will mean that as you adjust the size, whether you make it bigger or smaller, the lines will all stay proportionate to one another. So it's not going to remember any stroke weights and change the appearance of the wireframe as you adjust the scale. But for now, I'm gonna keep all these lines editable in width. And what we can do is we can see here with everything selected, black is our color, that is our color we've got selected. If we go over to the swatches palette, I'm going to double click on yellow. Make sure this is a global swatch, tick preview, and I'm gonna pick a random color. Okay, so we'll go with pink for now. Now I'm going to select the rectangle tool, left click and drag, swap the fill and the stroke. So we have no stroke, but we have a solid fill here. And I'm just going to drag this to the entire artboard. Then I'm going to go to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. So our background is behind everything else. So let's just adjust that so it fits the artboard exactly. And I'm then going to go to Object, Lock, 
and selection. So if I go into preview mode, that's Command Y on the Mac or Control Y on the PC, you'll see that we still have our iPhone here. In fact, what we're going to do now is centralize this. So just select everything, go up to Object, Group, look for this little icon here, and then click and select Align to Artboard. So when we align this vertically and horizontally in a moment, it will align it not to another shape, but to the artboard itself. So we can click here, Horizontal Align Center, and Vertical Align Center, and you'll see that it puts our composition right in the middle of the page. So let's come out of preview mode. Now what we can do is actually go over to our swatches palette, double click this global swatch that we made, ignore the name here, we can call that whatever we like. And with preview selected, as we adjust the swatch, it will adjust any instance of that on our page. So I'm going to make mine a very, very dark gray, almost close to black, I think. something like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the wireframe for our iPhone 6, make sure that I have the stroke selected, and in the swatches palette I'm going to double click on white. Make sure that that is a global swatch, and you can adjust these to be whatever you like as well. I'm going to make mine a very, very light grey. And again, because it is a global swatch, I can double click that swatch, adjust these values, and you'll see that it updates any instance of that color within the document. So if you did want to change the background color or the wireframe color, all you need to update are the swatches rather than selecting the individual items themselves. And there we go, we've created a wireframe for an iPhone 6 in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.